campuses have looked at us as a model to see how they may utilize it. And there's a lot of benefits, not only for recruitment, but you know, I know it's a different talk for later, but when it comes to performance evaluations and even onboarding of new employees, and those are things we are in the process of, of adopting, but that's something, a little thing, and hopefully you can cover in a couple yeah, those other are, lectures. Those are different lectures. So I would just do a follow-up and say, um, I've used NeoGov several times. It's, it's very effective. We just had a large faculty search. We had about 70 files, and it's really, it's the way to go. I hate technology even though I'm online, <laughs> and, but we all have to do it and, uh, and, and make it work for us, and, and NeoGov works really well. But let me now go to the um, next uh, question, and this is to uh, j look at just two of the recruitment uh, techniques that we talked about. There are a lot, and these are not necessarily the most important, but we only have time for a couple. Would you, uh, Alex, would you compare the contemporary use of newspapers and trade journals here at CSUSB. Sure. So one is the difference between the two. Um, they're both, sometimes there are subscriptions. Some people get them for free, some people have to pay for it. Uh, newspapers are, I guess, more broad, depending on the subject title. Usually they're local, they cover a, a wide variety of different topics, sports. And trade journals are really specific to where they cover a specific substance um, of information. Um, so for example, a common trade journal that we use to market to different positions, it is expensive, but it's the Chronicle of Higher Education. Uh, for example... Um, and you do bulk ads where you do multiple positions at the same time, right? Not necessarily for the Chronicle of, Educa Chronicle of Higher Education. Okay. You pay for um, like a space and depending on if you want to put a brief uh, subject on a particular position, um, it can cost anywhere from sixteen hundred to even thirty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. for one ad for one print ad. Um, it there are it doesn't also include their website. They also have some other things on there. Um, but a trade journal is something that we utilize more, especially for higher level positions that are um, or for positions that are harder to fill. As far as newspapers, um, that's something that I can see with the they're saying that print media is dying. In a sense, it's unfortunately it is it is happening, uh, but we don't utilize newspapers as much as we have used it in the past. Um, for some, even for entry level positions, right? Even for entry level That's positions. Amazing. So I know uh, we had had a previous discussion, and it just it's the the technology wave is really taking effect onto our recruitment strategies and recruitment process, and uh, utilizing or moving towards more electronic media such as like uh, LinkedIn. Um, and posting on other uh, websites that, are, like, say, utilizing Monster or ZipRecruiter, which they really do blast out your your recruit your job postings. Those seem like those are the most effective and most immediate ways we can get our, our message out or our, our positions out. One of the reasons why we have kind of slipped away from the newspaper media is that. A lot of times we want to be very mindful of our uh, state funds and budget, and it's become a little bit more expensive to post on these print media because, again, their their subscriptions are not as great as they used to be, so you have to pay more to help kind of maintain their own budget. Um, so that's, that's when it kind of comes with the print media. So, yeah, very interesting. So even though newspapers are not relatively that expensive, I think for the, they used to be the standby for the entry-level positions, Correct. and what we're finding now is that in fact web sources have largely um, replaced that even at the entry level. Mm -hmm. So newspapers have select use. I think you mentioned before mm -hmm. that, for example, you've done custodial uh, recruitments and some specialized one where you want local people. But it, that's that's an interesting thing. And the sixth edition of the book will be will reflect that. <laughs> so let's go into our last question, which is, would you discuss? Um, what CSUSD does in order to en uh, enhance diversity in its recruitment processes. It's a real important topic for us. Um, again, I worked with HR for almost a little over a year, um, and one thing I can say is that for any quality diversity plan to go into effect is that you have to have the proper leadership to really promote and really invest in that program. Um, I can say that um, with my uh, knowledge and the, the comments that have come from Dr. Uh, President Tomas Morales is that he's been a very strong proponent of diversity initiatives, especially in all recruitments. Um, and then my direct um, supervisor, Cesar Portillo, who I think you probably have a video yes. on him, um, who is the, the first, uh, the Associate Vice President of um, 
uh, human resources, uh, he is a strong advocate as well. Um, so what we have done is that number one is that we have uh, implemented training for recruitment or hiring committees. Um, that's one of the first things we want to do is that uh, any type of individuals who are involved in the recruitment of uh, certain positions, uh, that they understand the difference between uh, ex you know understanding diversity and really truly advocating diversity within the recruitment process. Understanding their own personal uh, biases, uh, whether that can be positive biases or negative biases. For example, a positive bias is like say somebody, you know, um, like Star Wars. I like Star Wars, I'm gonna give that person a leg up. Negative bias, you know, when somebody comes into an interview and they have said that they had went to an Ivy League school because you didn't go to an Ivy League school, then you're gonna not uh, not support them as much of the process. Those are some examples of that, and those are the things we touch on. In addition to just uh, ethically, um, the ideas of pluralism, pluralism between uh, utilizing a diverse um, training within our recruitment uh, hiring committees. Um, what we do on the outside, and that's kind of looking in the the in the the background of what we what we train for our hiring committees, is that we try to post our positions on. Uh, a wide variety of websites. Um, for example, we have our common main employment webpage on our website that we post our positions to, uh, but we also post to positions on hirevets.com, uh, um, which is a just a, for this year we tested it out, we're gonna come to the, the, the end of that particular contract and see how well we did and how our recruitment strategy did and really evaluate um, the, the, the audience that we're re reaching and see if any, how many of those individuals had applied. Um, we're also mandated to uh, post our positions on the uh, EDD employment website, which is our uh, CalJobs website. So what we've been trying to do is utilize the different technology and really uh, focus not just posting on our own website, but do actively recruit on different uh, diverse websites. Um, in addition to that, we've also made a local effort to attend a lot of the local job fairs around our Inland Empire area, even going all the way out to LA and going all the way out to um, the Palm Desert area because we also have our uh, sister campus over there with the Palm Desert campus. And again, just really trying to advocate that Cal State San Bernardino is an employer of choice and really market that you can have a quality career here if you, you know, apply. And again, it's, it's not guaranteed you'll get a position but you can't have that opportunity if you do not turn in a, uh, an application for a position. So we try to do a lot of active, active uh, recruiting. And again, our strategy is not set in stone. We're still evaluating it. We just got through my first year here. Um, and again, we're, we're always uh, evaluating our recruitment strategy and how can we improve it and see where areas of diversity where we can work on. Excellent. Well, I think actually diversity is something we're very good at, not only with our students, but within our staff and faculty. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Alex very much for, I think, a really excellent overview of the recruitment area. It was really useful to go into some of those examples in depth. And uh, so uh, on behalf of the virtual students, thank you very much, Alex. Thank you.